Hello there, my name is Azad Martin. Welcome to Nord University Short Lecture. I am the founder and the lead instructor at Nord University. And in this short lecture, I want to talk with you about OAuth grants. Grants, G R A N T, grant. They are special strategies of how you can authenticate and authorize to get protected resources. In the previous short lecture, I OAuth, so OAuth 2 supports five major grant types. So let's go and cover them in order and see what is their difference. So the main one, the most secure one, the one that has the most use cases, it's called authorization code. Grant type equals authorization code. So you spell grant underscore type equals authorization underscore code. So that's what you would put in that URL when you make a request to a service provider. So authorization code typically used with three-legged OAuth and uh, you would have to do that OAuth dance, the whole enchilada, and um, in the end you will get access token. All of those grants in the end, the main goal to get the access token. But get, well, guess what? There is an easier way. It's called implicit grant. Implicit grant by steps a few procedures that the authorization grant has. It's not a grant by itself, but um, there is no grant type value. There is a respond underscore type value equals to token. So when you request a token, depending on the provider and permissions for your application, uh, maybe you can get an implicit grant rather than going through the whole three-legged OAuth dance with authorization code to get the access token. So the implicit grant is good for single page applications. And most of us, most of web developers now, we build single page applications, right? Okay, so let's move to a few more grant types. My favorite grant type, it's called password. Grant underscore type equals password. That's it. You get the password and you pass it to the service provider. You're not supposed to store the password, but then the server provider will verify that username and password and send it, send back to you the payload. The payload will have the access token, which you can store and later use uh, over and over for, for making requests on behalf of your user. Okay, so it doesn't require three-legged, it's more like two-legged because uh, there, is no, there is no dance, there is no redirection. Um, the tricky part is to get the password. Of course, some users would not trust the application uh, that I'm building. They might say, I don't know Azad. Uh, I'm not trusting that he's not going to store my password. And that's definitely a concern. But if it's something you're building for an enterprise where you know the users, they're trusting your application, it's totally fine. And of course, uh, you can open source your code and you can show that you are not actually storing the password. The benefit is that there is no callback URL because uh, the service in the user back. So there is no uh, problem with configuring. There is no hassle with configuring that callback URL for different environments, QA, production, etc. So I really like grand type password. I use this at Storyfy at Capital One. I really like it. Then there is client credentials. Client credentials, it's even easier because we are implying that there is no need to get the user permissions. So it's just your client, your application, and that's it. So you are making requests on behalf of yourself and um, the resources are not owned. They're not protected by users, so you don't need those permissions or maybe those resources they are public so if i go to twitter and uh, i sign up to be a developer i create my application uh well guess what most of the information on twitter is public all those tweets the searches they are public what is trending they are public uh, so i don't need to have a user's permission i can just be an application all that information is public and my application will be hitting those apis absolutely fine with the use of the client underscore credentials. Then there is the last grant type, which is refresh token. So most of the tokens, they have an expiration date. Sometimes it's a few days, sometimes it's a few months, maybe a couple of months, 60 days, 90 days. So once in a while, you'd have to refresh it. 
because because it's a security the tokens might be leaked they might be compromised they might expire uh, the user might decide to revoke it so refresh underscore token that's a special grant type which will allow you to get a new token exchange a new token so that's it pretty much about the grant types authorization underscore code that's what most of you are gonna use if you're lucky and uh, you can request a password from your users um, you you might be using the password yes it's a little bit of hassle for users because they need to enter the password to Facebook into your application or a password to Google into your application they might not trust it or they might trust it I don't know your application but it's definitely easier from a technical standpoint because you don't need to have a callback client credentials it's even easier than the password but it's not for all use cases it's not for the use cases when you need to request it and then refresh token and there is also implicit grant which is more for single page applications which is some people say it's less secure than authorization code but hey, do your own research okay um, this is a short lecture my name is Azad Mardan follow me on Nod University uh, subscribe to this podcast and let me know what topics you want me to cover what JavaScript and Node.js topics you want me to cover in the future episodes and I'll see you in the next video and uh, the next podcast